Hey, this is Evans at Motorcycle.com, and boy am I excited. The reason is, I'm here in Santa Barbara, California, the night before Honda is set to introduce its new touring line. I'm standing here with Colin Miller, model specialist from Honda Motorcycles, and he's going to tell us all about the new gold wings. That's plural. And so let's talk about that. We got two models. Yes, definitely. Um, right off the bat, you can see this is uh, this one we're standing next to is the Goldwing Tour model, um, which has the trunk, uh, tall windscreen, and, uh, and then if you pan over this way, you can see that there is uh, one that has uh, no trunk and a shorter windscreen, and that is the standard Goldwing. Great. They're both based around the same platform, though, which is some things differentiating them. So why don't we start first? Since the engine is so important in motorcycles, let's talk about the engine. It's my understanding it's a completely new design. Correct, yeah. It's an all-new 1800 six-cylinder engine. Basically, we really tried to, to kind of bring the design in size down a little bit and move the rider position forward, so that was all taken into account when we were designing this engine. Um, so it's actually been moved forward slightly by actually uh, bringing the cylinders closer together. It now runs a, a four valves per cylinder, unicam head, you know, it incorporates a lot of other things like an integrated starter generator, um, which allows the unit to be started and powered via one unit, and that's all kind of integrated into the new engine. Was that part of the weight savings plan, I'm guessing? Is the new Goldwing significantly lighter than the previous one? Yeah, we've, uh, we've shaved almost 90 pounds off of it altogether. Wow. So yeah, definitely everywhere we looked, we tried to see where we can incorporate things, uh, bring things together, kind of make a more uniform package uh, to give it a better power to weight ratio. Now, I know that Honda does not list its horsepower figures, but I heard someone mention that um, it's about five horsepower more than the previous models. Yeah, and then if you think about um, the fact that it lost about 90 pounds on top of that, so you definitely feel it when you're riding it, I can attest. So the other big change um, on the bike is it's, it's narrower and smaller and mm -hmm. more aerodynamic. Can you tell me um, what you all did to, to accomplish that? Yeah, the, uh, the fairings have all been redesigned as well. Um, the front fairing, the side, I mean, pretty much the whole bike layout. Um, so we redesigned it uh, to give it a more compact feel. But in doing that, we made sure that we designed the aerodynamics so it wouldn't interfere with the rider, that he didn't get more wind impact uh, in positioning the rider forward and how the wind would come up over your head. It still provided uh, basically better protection uh, from the elements than you would see on the previous model. Cool. And underneath that swoopy bodywork is something that I'm really curious to sample. Tell me about the front end, because it's totally different. Previously, you had the telescopic forks, but now this is a um, double wishbone setup. So you have a single shock followed by basically two A-arms, um, which it, it helps uh, with uh, many features such as stability, anti-dive, and uh, it really was a big feature that we incorporated on this model for benefit. My understanding is that it allows for more aggressive braking, even when you're tracking over bumps, because it will handle it better. Sure. You know, um, yeah. I mean, you basically, instead of a, you know, a telescopic fork, the, the, the front end is basically moving up in towards the motorcycle, where this allows it to kind of move in a more upward fashion to keep that stability with the bike. What else can you tell me about it? Um, well, to kind of touch back on the engine, one of the major factors is the, uh, this bike now has two transmission options. You have a, a, a seven-speed dual-clutch transmission or a six-speed manual transmission. So that's just the traditional clutch. Um, the seven-speed um, has a forward and reverse speed mode, and walking speed mode, um, where the manual transmission in the touring package has a, uh, a reverse like the previous edition Goldwing did. And my understanding is even with these two different transmissions, the final gearing ratio is exactly the same. So what you get with the, the DCT is closer space gearing, so it really improves the sportiness of the ride. Exactly, yeah, you're able to do that while still um, utilizing the high gear in the seven speed and the, the new six speed to get that nice highway uh, comfortable cruising speed as well. Um, let's talk a little bit about suspension because I know that you all have made some changes aside from just the change to the fork. The Tour model, which we're standing next to, has a, an adjustable electronic preload. So you can basically select one of four different modes uh, for the preload setting. It's, um, a, and that displays on the meter as well. The, uh, the standard Goldwing has a, a manual adjuster preload. 
um, which is just via done a knob under the side cover. Another aspect of the suspension that comes in on the Touring model are the uh, four riding modes that are now available on the bike. You have Sport, Rain, Econ, and Touring mode. Um, so not only does that um, adjust the power and the level of torque control that's applied to the bike, but it also affects um, the damping characteristics of the suspension on the Touring model. Will those damping characteristics be um, user adjustable separate from the, the, the ride mode too, or is it all completely interlinked? It, yeah, it's all completely interlinked through the riding modes, mm -hmm. but you still can adjust the rear preload separately. Okay. So. With this model, it now has uh, Apple CarPlay integration. So basically iPhone users, iPod users, you can hook up your iPhone and be able to navigate through your uh, Apple apps on your screen. You can use you know, your podcast app, your music, any of those Apple apps actually displayed on the screen itself. If you happen to not have an Apple phone, you have an Android or something else, it also has Bluetooth connectivity. So you can connect that through the Bluetooth and listen to your music, access your phone, contacts lists. Um, and with that, you can also Bluetooth to a headset as well. You can play your music through there, um, talk on the phone. With the, uh, with the Apple CarPlay, you can also use Siri. Oh, another technology um, I think I heard mentioned was uh, keyless operation. Could you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, if one of the things you notice right off the bat is that there's no actual key knob up here. It's just a, a, a little uh, rotating knob. And so what you actually have is a smart key. So the smart key is, uh, is remote. You can keep it in your pocket. There's no need to put, pull it out you know, activate anything. And uh, so as soon as you walk up, you can turn the bike on via the knob and ride away. So it makes things a lot simpler, especially if you, you know, have all your gear on and you've got your gloves on and you yep. forgot, oh, my key, I forgot my key, where's that? Well, you don't have to even worry about it. You can just drive it up, turn, rotate the knob and turn the bike on. But I remember in the presentation, there was something about there being an on off switch on the, on the smart key. Could you explain that? Because I think that's a really cool feature. Sure. Yeah. Um, in, in the smart key itself, um, we wanted to make sure that, you know, there weren't any issues. So you have a system where if you're, uh, you know, you're off eating lunch somewhere and you, you, know, you maybe you're close to the bike um, and close enough to where it can pick up the key, but you don't want anybody accidentally turning the knob on or being able to ride away on your bike. Um, you simply can use the button on the back to turn the key off so we we'll, won't allow the bike to turn on until you reactivate the key. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So it keeps people from being able to open the trunk too, I guess. Exactly, because um, all the trunk opening and closing and saddlebag opening and closing um, is all controlled by the key as well. So if you were to walk away completely, you can't open the trunk. As soon as you walk back over to the bike, it detects that you've walked over with the key on and you can then open the bags. Now I rode up today um, on a 2017 Goldwing mm -hmm. and it's got a lot of bells and whistles, but I'd forgotten until I got on it that it had two latches that you had to pull to adjust the windscreen. Now I know you've got to have gone electronic now. We definitely have. Um, with the Tour model, we have the, uh, the tall adjustable windscreen. So there's a switch basically on your left-hand side that allows you to raise and lower the windscreen to a comfortable position. When you turn the motorcycle off, the windscreen will drop down to its full lowest position. But as soon as you start back up and take off, it basically returns to the same position you had it at previously. With there being two Goldwing models, um, is it possible uh, to upgrade the, the, the standard Goldwing to the Goldwing Tour. Um, are there any ways that you can do that if you decide you want to do that later? Um, well, there are some features that can be added and modified. So you can basically um, add or delete the trunk if you would like. So, so you can delete the trunk off of the Goldwing Tour also? Correct. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there's a trunk deletion kit, which basically allows you to, to remove this trunk and puts in you know, a, piece of, uh, uh, a piece of plastic that is you know, matched to the bike and, and uh, allows you to kind of put your bike towards the standard Goldwing in regards to that. So um, I'm sure there are reasons why people would want the Tour over the standard. What, what, what are the differences in the two packages aside from the trunk? Because there's some functional ones too. Um, yeah, so in the, the, the regular Goldwing, um, you do have uh, two less speakers. So the Tour has two additional speakers and, um, and it also has the electronically adjustable suspension preload. Okay. Um, the standard Goldwing does not, um, but both models have 
um, you know, the full integration of CarPlay, all the technology regarding the Bluetooth audio, mm -hmm. everything like that. You also do have riding modes on that. It just doesn't um, affect the dampening okay. on the standard model. That one does not need dampening. Features. Is navigation cool. um, included? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have navigation on uh, all the models as well as uh, 10 years worth of updates for free. Normally, you'd have to periodically pay $100 for another yeah. set of updates, but uh, we're providing that for that 10 years. Wow, so this, this is a lot to digest, and now you can see why I wanted Colin here to help me, because I would never have been able to remember all of this. Um, if you're watching this on the 24th of October, this is when it's all changing for the Goldwing. It's pretty cool. I'm really excited. To learn more about the 2018 Goldwings, plural, go to Motorcycle.com, where I'll put up an entire story about both models and what you can do, what, what the differences are and all that. Go to Motorcycle.com. And if you like this video, please hit that like button because it makes us happy.